Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again Tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Pain Serena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org. No, I mean, I, I don't want us to tell women to be proud of how you're spending your time, be proud of what yeah. you're doing right. I want us to model it. Yeah. Love and it. so as uncomfortable as it may make you, let's just go around and I'd love for each of you to say one thing you're really proud of. Yeah, can you start on that side? <laughs> and for that reason... Hey everyone, and welcome to The Christy Wright Show, where faith meets personal development so you can have a bigger faith and a better life. I'm so excited because today we are talking about something that, I'll be honest, most people, especially women, many women can be uncomfortable with. And y'all know, I just love to go into these issues, hit them head on, and maybe, maybe, push you outside of your comfort zone. And then later on in the show, I'm gonna share with you an amazing conversation and moment that I had with a group of women that I just absolutely love and respect and admire. I had an opportunity to sit down with some amazing Bible teachers, authors, mothers, friends, to talk to all of these women about what balance looks like in different ages, different stages, different family situations, different work environments, and so on. Well, there was this one particular moment that we captured, and I'm gonna actually share it with you today. But first, let's talk about this thing that we can be uncomfortable with. Well, you know I've talked before about confidence, and I've talked before about how sometimes, in an effort to be humble, we can be self-deprecating. We can be um, hard on ourselves. We can spin up this narrative that we're failing. We can talk about how we're failing. Hashtag mom fail. Oh, here's how I screwed up today. And here's how I failed my kids and I'm failing at work. And we just, in an effort to be humble or an effort to be vulnerable, we end up just absolutely sabotaging our own sense of confidence. But that's not the only problem with this false humility that we tend to get into. I think one of the problems with it is that we completely lose any appreciation, any enjoyment of the things we're doing right. Right, like in any situation, we have things we're doing really well and things that maybe we feel like we're not doing as great at or things that we've chosen intentionally to let go. But what we do is we focus on the areas that we're falling short. We're focusing on the no. We're focusing on the negative. We're focusing on the things we didn't get to on our to-do list. We're focusing on the commitments we didn't say yes to. And here's one of the things I've noticed. I've noticed that we judge others based on what they're doing right, and we judge ourselves based on what we think we're doing wrong. So we scroll through Instagram and go, oh my gosh, she's such a good mom. Look, she's taking her kids to the playground. Oh, she's an amazing woman. She's making homemade dinners. Oh, well, you know, he's just rocking it at work. Look how successful is it? Oh, and and he's launching a book and she's doing this and he's doing that. And we scroll and we observe people in our community and our workplaces and we're so impressed with all the things they're doing right. And then we look at ourselves and the only thing we pay attention to is what we're doing wrong. We don't give ourselves the same credit we give them of, hey, they're doing some stuff right and I'm doing some stuff right. And they're probably doing some stuff wrong or, or letting some stuff go that they're not showing just like I am. So we look at the, the mom on Instagram that has the perfectly behaved kids and we look at our kids smearing peanut butter on the walls and go, she's successful and I'm a failure. There's one thing I want you to consider. I just want you to consider what would it look like to flip your focus from the negative to the positive, from the no to the yes, from the things you feel like you're falling short on to the things that you are absolutely rocking it in. Because in place of all the things that you feel like you didn't get to, there's a long list of things you did. In place of all the things you think you're falling short, there's a long list of things that you are winning at, that you are doing very well. But we don't give credit to those things. 
We're not proud of those things. We don't enjoy those things. We don't appreciate those things. We don't feel satisfied in those things. We always focus on the lack. What would it look like to be proud of what you're doing right? And I don't mean a boastful pride. I don't mean a pride where you think the world revolves around you, you think you did that apart from God or you did that apart from other people that helped you. I just mean simply appreciating something you did well. Simply being proud, a healthy pride of what you've done right. You know, my my kids are in swim lessons right now and we've kept them in swim lessons through the summer even though they, they really nailed it halfway through the summer. We're keeping them in swim lessons in the winter to keep their skills sharp just once a week so they don't lose those skills. And y'all, there was this moment, there was this moment this summer when it clicked for my boys, where they went from floundering around and flopping around and being scared and being crazy to where something clicked and they swam from one side of the pool to the other side of the pool. When my son came up out of the water with his little goggles and his wet hair, his face beamed with pride. He was so proud of himself and I was so proud of him. It was a pride that created confidence. It was a pride that led to enjoyment, enjoying this new skill he learned, an appreciation for his body being able to do that, a healthy pride that I think many of us completely miss out on because we're so scared we're gonna be arrogant, because we're so consumed with whatever our ideas about humility are. I think you can be proud of yourself and still be humble, where you realize every good and perfect gift came from God anyway, but we can appreciate what he's given us and what we've done through that, what we've done with that, how we've maximized that. I'll tell you a simple practice that I have started, and this is so simple, but it has helped me stop the broken record in my mind that I'm failing. Every morning when I have about five to 10 minutes to myself before my kids wake up, before I uh, go about my day, pour the coffee and just run really hard and fast, before I plan my to-do list for the day, I journal and one of my journaling exercises, I just journal a few lines. It's not a big exercise, it takes two minutes. But before I write my to-do list for the day, I write a list of what I'm proud of from yesterday. And these can be the simplest things, y'all. It can be, I took my kids to the playground, or I cleaned the house, or I cooked dinner, or I had some time alone, had a great conversation with a friend, I slept in, I took it easy on myself. It can be anything, the simplest things. But I write down what I'm proud of from yesterday before I pile on the pressure for today. That changes my perspective drastically. No longer am I only focusing on the work yet to be done, the the tasks that I still need to complete and check off and all the things I have yet to do. I take a moment to appreciate and be proud of what I did yesterday. Just one minute, just one moment to reflect on the things I did right, the things I'm proud of, the things that I am successful at. That creates in me not just a confidence that I am actually doing something right, which is good for us to know as busy people in this world. It gives me an appreciation for it. Hey, you're doing better than you think you are. What would it look like for you to pause and just be proud of what you're doing right instead of always focusing on what you think you're doing wrong? Because I wanna remind you, in place of all the tasks you haven't gotten to, in place of all the things you think you're falling short on, there is a long list, a long list of things you're doing right. I wanna help you recognize that. I wanna help you appreciate that. And yes, I wanna help you be proud of that. You know, a few weeks ago, I had an opportunity to sit down with some amazing women. We talked about life balance. We had a conversation about what balance looks like in different ages and stages and seasons and different family situations, married, single, kids, no kids, working in the home, outside the home, and everything in between. But at the very end of our time together, and this was a long all-day video shoot, after we had covered all the segments we wanted to cover for the Christy Wright Show, which aired back in September, after we asked all the questions we wanted to ask, at the very end, right before I wrapped up, I had this moment, and this was not planned. 
This was not something we scripted out. We, we prepped them ahead of time, but I just felt in my spirit that I wanted to ask them one final question. I said, this is gonna make y'all uncomfortable. And I didn't plan to do this, but I wanna ask you as we wrap up today, would you just share something you're proud of? I know that's hard. It's really hard. We don't wanna come off as braggy. We don't want people to think that we're arrogant, that we think we're better than anybody else. But I think as women, we swing so far to the opposite extreme that we absolutely miss out on appreciation, on even having gratitude for the things that we're doing right. And so I asked them to go around the room and to share something they're proud of. And I said, I won't ask you to do anything I'm not willing to do myself, so I'll go first. And I got really emotional at sharing the thing that I was proud of. And even now, I feel my eyes burning, even remembering that moment. Women, what would it look like to consider the things you're doing right? What would it look like to pause for just a moment, maybe just between you and God and maybe your journal, and just go, you know what? I'm proud of that. Yeah, I am. I am proud of I did that. I'm proud I did that. I'm proud that I'm getting that right. I worked really hard at that. I challenge you to do that. It might make you uncomfortable, but I think God might just show you something about yourself, about true humility, and even about what He thinks about you in that exercise. Check out this conversation with my amazing friends as we talk about what we're proud of. I didn't plan to do this, but as we wrap up, because we're, we're running low on time, but I would love to do something fun that I didn't plan at all. Let's just go around, and I'd love for each of you to say one thing you're really proud of. I want to model that, and I know it's hard, and I know it's going to make you uncomfortable and squirmy. Yeah, can you start on that? (laughs) And for that reason, no, I mean, I I, I don't want us to tell women to be proud of how you're spending your time, be proud of what you're doing right. I want us to model it. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. And so as uncomfortable as it may make you, Mm -hmm. um, I'll go first to to give you guys a beat, and then we'll just, let's just popcorn it and everybody say something when you feel comfortable. Um, I'm really proud of how active I am with my kids. Like, I like, it sounds so simple, but like, I'm not a distant mom. I'm like, I'm in it. Yeah, yep. I'm in it with them. And um, yeah, I'm proud of them. Um, I I would have to say I'm proud of how I'm navigating not being able to really do what I've done for so long, Mm -hmm. where I found my identity Mm -hmm. and realizing that my identity is not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, truly finding out who I am in the process. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of the journey. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm saying journey because we're not there. <laughs> yeah. But f- I'm proud of this journey. Yeah. For sure. You should be. That's awesome. I would say, and it's kind of related to what you said, um, I'm really proud that my kids will tell me that I was a great mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't feel like it. Um, and I think in a season where, you know, two are leaving and the other two are moving in different stages, it's, it's not something that I necessarily felt at the time. And it's yeah. not something I ever thought they would say. Um, I know, I mean, and I know, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I'm oh crying too. This is true. Joy dealer, tissues dealer, <laughs> we got it all. <laughs> but I think it's, it's, Unusually hard for me to jump to the thing that I'm proud of. I mean, I, yeah. I think that's, I, I love that you asked that. Mm-hmm. I will say um, I'm proud of the fact that I just finished um, my graduation packet for personal executive coaching. Um, <gasps> I, I turned it in on Saturday, and it's my single mom side hustle to yes, you it. know be able to make that. ends meet for my boys yes, and yes. I. And I, um, I am proud of myself right. that I've yeah. done that's that. Amazing. So, awesome. that's taking amazing. that step and started a coaching practice, and that's amazing. Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go. This is hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for doing this. Because. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is hard for us. I think all of us can say that as women. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about ourselves, much less be proud of ourselves for something. And I'm like going through the list and I'm like, no, I can't say that. No, I can't say that. Well, Uh I can say that. I I can say that. But I think one thing I am so proud of is the family Mm -hmm. that we have built Mm -hmm. and the marriage we have and the children that we have and that they're walking with the Lord. And I could not be more grateful for that. Yeah, you should be. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> um, ooh, I'm really proud to know that I'm able to like sit here and speak because mm-hmm. um, I've looked up to Christy <laughs> and I, I had a small business and, and I told her last night and I've told my husband this, I'm like, I can't even believe like this is my life. Like, I can't even believe that I'm able to sit amongst, like I did your Bible study, you know, it's like, <laughs> That, I'm really proud of that. Like, I'm really proud that I have a seat at the table mm-hmm. when you sure do. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't think that this could be my narrative. Okay. So, okay, yeah, but you also awesome. need to say, like, you're proud because you did this well. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. You know, I think yes. it's really easy to be like, I'm really proud of the family that I have. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. because you are an awesome right. parent. Be yeah. proud that's of that. Right. Or that's like, right. you. That's right. yes. Don't that's right. take out the part that you played that's in right. that, you know? Like, yeah. you're yeah. welcome here because you, yeah. you deserve it. it and you, you did, did a great job and you earned it. Patsy said about you before you even sat down, she was like, she lights up a room. I said, yes, she does. At least she does. Yes, she does. Yeah. Wow. When you have to dig through as many years as I've had, <laughs> you're not sure what you're digging in. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all. I'm so ready for this. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> You want to put this? Here you go. Thank you. Do you know there isn't anything I can think of that I've done that I have the right to claim because it all depended on either God's grace or it depended on um, someone who was generous enough to make an inclusion. Mm -hmm. I think... um, Two words that come to me immediately are inclusion and safety. Two words I'm extremely fond of when I'm the recipient from others. But um, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> one of my proud of. Um, uh, then I've survived 76 years. Yeah. Uh, and it's been with uh, a lot of help. But I... I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that I'm still being asked to show up Mm, and um, that two brain cells occasionally still speak to each other. (laughs) Um, So... Patsy, you told a story a um, a long time ago. It was for our company devotional, I think it was, but you were telling the story of when you were agoraphobic and scared to leave your house and how the Lord... I just remember this story. um, The Lord asked you to make your bed. And you argued with him, and you said, well, I'm still in it, so I can't. But you did. I just think the things that you've overcome, yeah. whether you want to share them or not, we know them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have a lot yeah. to be proud of, yeah. a whole mm-hmm. lot that is a light to a lot of people, mm-hmm. whether you realize it or not. Yes. Y'all, this was fun. This and, so fun. And, and, a, and a lot. And I feel how like dare you? I feel like I've been in some therapy. I know. I'm like... Oh, when I was seven? Oh <laughs> it started. Who did you have to be, Angie? Who did you have to be? This is who I had to be. Oh. <laughs> it makes my eight. It's well, so I, great. I think Karen really got a hold of it there when she said, thank you for doing yeah. this because yeah. we as women don't yeah. often go in and say, I'm yeah. really proud of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it goes back to what we said a minute ago, the head and the heart. It's mm-hmm. like we can know something like, yeah, girl, be proud of what you did. I don't have anything to be proud yeah. of. It's yeah. like, Mm-hmm. Modeling, I think, is so powerful to pave the way mm-hmm. for them to not only know they need to do it, but see it done and see other people uncomfortable with it and doing it anyway. And so, what if that is part of the balance? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yep. I don't know that I add that in very mm-hmm. much. Yeah. To how I, I always look at the lack, and I think that's that's mm-hmm. exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's so exactly. I need right. to add that to my. You know, what I started doing this is just a sidebar, but before I make my to-do list for a day. I'll write down things I'm proud of from I, yesterday. Oh, oh, that's not what I was going to say. Mm, <laughs> I was going to say I write down things I've already done and then I check them off. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry. I, I, that, that also. Okay. That also. Yes. But I was like leading oh. like, oh, oh yes. no, that's way <laughs> no. godlier than what no, I was No, because what happens is I make I a do list and then I don't do it and then I feel guilty. So I'm like, but I did do something. So what did I do? Yeah. Maybe I went on the list. So, so I'll write down, here's yeah, all the things that I did. That's awesome. And I'm proud of those things before I make the list and beat myself up for that new list. You know what I mean? But it's like, you're so right. It's the lack that we focus on and that's so much the guilt comes from yeah. versus of being proud of what we did do, whether yeah. it's being a great mom or mm. running a business or just 
getting the laundry done, like yes. whatever, you know. So. Yeah, I can remember going to bed and I'd make a list in my head of everything that I had done and then I'd count them and if I didn't think there was enough, I'd get up and do two more things, oh, wow. you know, so oh, the man. list could be long enough and I thought, wow. oh, this isn't a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't yeah. healthy. This is really putting yourself in a pressure point. Mm. Uh, you, you, we so often as women will be the reason for our own drama. So true. Ooh, that's so true. <laughs> Girl, you better break. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I need that slate to oh, come back out. Note. All right, y'all, it is time to answer your questions and take your calls. I'm loving hearing your stories and loving hearing from you. We're going to kick this off by going to Spokane, Washington with Anna. Hey, Anna, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, what's going on? How can I help? Oh, I hate to sound whiny, but... um, (laughs) I like this start, Anna. (laughs) I'm a working mom. I work really hard. I work full-time plus, and I manage the house. You know, I make sure... We're getting ready for back to school here, and I make sure they got all of their supplies and their clothes and um, make sure dinner gets on the table and food is in the fridge. And so I asked them to help out because I'm exhausted most of the time. Um, and they do, well, sometimes they argue about it, both the kids and maybe the husband a little bit. And so when I delegate these chores, how do I not come back home, walk in the house and feel very frustrated. Either they didn't do it in a timely manner or they didn't do it completely. They love to do things like vacuum and then leave the vacuum in the middle of the floor or they just don't finish their jobs. My son emptied all the garbages um, as I requested the other day. And then I come home and there's garbage around the garbage can. Yeah. <laughs> so I hate to be whiny, but I'm kind of frustrated with my family that they don't care about our house, maybe the same amount that I do. Yeah. Anna, you and about every woman ever from the history of time. Let's start with that. Okay. So just know, I just want to validate that. Like this is a normal, very, very common frustration in households. And I'm not, not trying to make generalizations. Yes, you have marriages where the husband's the neat freak and the wife is the messy one and whatever. This is not a, a male female thing, but this is a very common struggle because women tend to be the one in the household that holds all the things together. The other problem with this dynamic is many times, not always, but many times, it is the wife mother that is doing all these things. And then because she either doesn't communicate at all or doesn't communicate effectively, she ends up feeling resentful when they don't know what to do and they don't do it. So I just want to start and kind of unpack this for a second. Tell me about your family dynamic. Are you married and what are the ages of your kids? Yeah, I'm married 25 years now. We just celebrated and my kids are now 17 and 14. Okay. Um, Having chores is not new to them. I went back to work when they started school and started them right away learning how to run their own laundry from beginning to end. So I would have the daily chores for them. Like they would help with the dishes at the end of the day. And then they would also, at the end of the week, they would do their laundry. And um, when they're home in the summer, I ask them to do one other thing. Like, you know, the windows are real streaky. Could you get those? And for the number of hours... (laughs) They play other things right. like electronics. Right. You would think so. And my husband does try to help out. Um, it's really actually helped me to understand our personality differences a little bit because he just doesn't care how things look like I do. Right. So he thinks I should be pleased that he swept all of the dog hair up off the floor. But when I walk in the door, all I see is that he left the pile of dog hair right in front of the garbage can. <laughs> Right. You know, and I'm trying, I, I tell him I fight it. I, and the first thing I think is I should be so thankful he swept. Right. But it's just really hard for me to come home. And then my son is like, well, I made brownies today. It's like, well, okay, but you're sitting down playing electronics now and you've left all of the brownie dishes. Right, 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 right. Okay, here's the thing, Anna. I hear you and I totally get it. I have, um, I've had very similar conversations with my family. We've we've all been there. So let me give you a tip on a communication tip, Mm -hmm. okay? And this is one thing that may help. It's not going to be a switch that you flip. It's not going to fix it overnight. But if you can start to speak to the problem on this level, I think it might be more effective in um, 
letting them know what you need and being more specific and so on. So let me give you an example. Sure. When I talk to my family, let's let's use an example with Matt and I, because we have certainly had these conversations. Every couple ever has, by the way. So Matt and I, when we talk about this, I don't just talk about, will you, let's use your example of the dog hair, okay? I don't just talk about the dog hair. Will you sleep, sweep the dog hair? I talk about the why behind sweeping the dog hair. In your example, it might look something like this. Now, you make it your own, Anna. So you talk about this in a way that is your personality, your communication style. So don't feel like it has to be like this. But here's here's how I do it, for example. Be like, hey, Matt, you work full-time and I work full-time. So we're both putting in hours at a full-time job. So I think it's fair that what's done in the house should be split evenly too. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, So I do these things and the list is long, like I'm sure yours is, Anna. (laughs) Could you do these things? And the reason I I need you to do these things is because we don't like to walk in dog hair. It gets on our clothes, and I don't like going to work with dog hair on my clothes. Do you? No, I don't either. No, I don't know. That's all we need to sweep it up. And the whole point of you sweeping the dog hair for me is so that I don't have to do that work because I'm doing these things. So it would really be awesome if you could do the entire job. And that means sweeping it and throwing it away so I never see it. And oh, by the way, putting the broom away so I never see it. Because see, if you leave a pile of dog hair or you tell your adult sons, if you leave the vacuum in the middle of the floor, you didn't actually finish the job. So I still have to take part of that job. But I already have my own jobs over here. So I need you to finish the job. Whatever the job is, I need you to finish it, start to finish so that I never have to touch it. Can you do that? And so I know this sounds almost like you're talking to a child and you don't have to sound condescending. It's just in the effort to be insanely clear because what happens all the time, Anna, and I have been guilty of this, it is a trend with women, is we say to our husbands, will you help more? And they're like, yes, babe, yes. Yes, I wanna help you. I am with you. And they mean it, they're in it. And they do one thing that was helpful And we had a different idea in our head. We had in our head, they were going to do 15 things, including folding all the laundry, but we didn't tell them that. And they swept the dog hair and they felt like, well, I am helping. Every conversation I've ever had with my husband, Matt, never does he say, I'm not helping at all. You're totally right. He's like, I am helping. We're somehow missing each other in our communication. Yeah. So I would just advise you to begin to talk about the why. The why of the help is because you're working full-time and you're already doing these things. Your teenage sons, there's going to need to be some consequences there, Anna. They don't get to play video games if they're leaving the vacuum in the middle of the floor. They don't get to. They're still living in your household. You're still in charge here. And so there needs to be some consequences for them. Obviously, you don't relate to your husband like that. That would not be good for relationship building whatsoever. But you can appeal to the why. You can appeal to the why. You can appeal to the motivation behind it. Like, hey, when you do a job halfway, I still have to do it. But the whole point of you doing it is so I don't have to do it. Can you do it completely? I don't want to walk through dog hair sticking to my feet. I don't want to go to work with dog hair on my clothes. Do you? Appeal to the why. And I think if you can appeal there, they will meet you there. You will find common ground there. You both agree things should be fair. You both agree you don't want to go to work with dog hair on your clothes. You both agree that the job should be done because if not, they didn't really do it at all. A job half done is still not done. And so when you begin to communicate with unbelievable clarity, but again, appealing to the common ground of the motivation, hopefully that will bring more clarity to the relationship. And they may speak up and say, you know what? Truth is, I hate doing dog hair. Can I do something different? You're like, cool, yeah, I'll do dog hair. Would you do... This then, it is finding common ground and finding compromise. Let's be honest, no one in the house wants to sweep dog hair, Anna. Nobody. You don't, they don't, the kids don't, nobody does, but it has to be done. One of the greatest pieces of advice I've ever gotten in marriage, and I would advise this to you, maybe you've heard it before. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see what I mean here. Often in marriage, we see the problem between us and our spouse, us and our family. So it becomes this wedge between us, and we can't get to each other because of that problem. Set the problem aside and say, hey, me and you, we're on the same team. We're going to tackle this problem together. Do that. Set the problem aside, the household responsibilities, the dog hair, whatever, aside and go, hey, help me solve this because I'm already maxed out. How can we solve this together so that everything gets done? And maybe they want to do different chores and you're fine with that. But it's a common struggle. I just want you to know you're not alone and you're doing great. Just appeal to the deeper motivations and be super clear in your communication and hopefully it will improve over time. Over time being the key. 
Great question. Thanks for calling, Anna. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me as always. And you can tune in next week for another new episode of The Christy Wright Show. As always, for more encouragement on becoming the person you want to be, you can visit ChristyWright.com. Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again Tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org.